I'm Jake Davis, a marine biologist and underwater videographer who's based in North Wales on the Llyn Peninsula. And over the last six or so years, I've been involved with Project Seagrass as a volunteer, um, as a reason ambassador, and recently a trustee to the charity. Project Seagrass is a charity which aims to educate, inspire, and also carry out research to seagrass, not just around the UK, but all around the world. And as part of their research, they then set quite a bit of it here in Portfinkline on the Llyn Peninsula, which is one of the densest and largest found off the Welsh coast. As part of Project Seagrass work, they do an element of restoration where over the last few years, they've been collecting seeds from multiple beds across the UK, as well as Portfinkline, where they've been coming during the summer period to do the seed collections, where they will then take these seeds back to the lab and they'll germinate them there and then they'll plant them in where they have been doing in Pembrokeshire, in Dale, where they've been doing a hectare worth of seagrass planting. And it's been a really successful project over the last couple of years. So Project Seagrass aims to inspire both the public, divers, and everyone to get involved with seagrass conservation, where they have different parts. So they can educate schools, pupils, and all generations about the seagrass and the importance of this amazing habitat but also carry out fundamental research to better understand seagrass meadows all over the world, where ultimately one of the aims is to restore seagrass meadows back around the coasts of the UK and wider fields. Support so Portland where we're at as part of the expedition wet is somewhere I grew up and spent a lot of my childhood swimming around this bay itself, which is behind me is where, where the seagrass is found. And as a child, I remember many memories in the summer, just exploring and seeing so many different marine life and marine creatures that are found as part of this habitat. Not knowing how important it was until years later when I got involved with Project Seagrass as a volunteer, helping them do their surveys intertidally and underwater doing subtidal surveys. But as years gone by, I've done more surveys to help Project Seagrass better understand the seagrass meadows. And it's been really important. And I've then helped to educate and inspire the wider communities on the importance of seagrass as an underwater videographer. So linking my passion of marine biology and videography together to really show people how amazing this habitat is and the amazing benefits that it holds. With Project Seagrass, they carry out a variety of different surveys and there's always opportunities for divers or even snorkelers or anyone else who's interested in seagrass conservation to get involved with these different projects. But one thing divers can do if they haven't done already is head down to a local seagrass bed and actually explore it themselves and see how amazing these habitats are. But whilst they're there, they can actually take, if they get any photos or videos, you can go online to Seagrass Spotter and put your observation in there, which is a map that has seagrass sightings from across the globe. So if you don't know what the species is from the UK, we only have two species, but around the world, you can then explore the different species in that area. So it's not just here in your local patch, you can go when you're on holiday, you can actually submit your seagrass sightings to the Seagrass Spotter online. Like many habitats when you're diving, you don't want to disturb it too much. Just as always, just take it gentle through it and just explore it and don't try and fin too hard or pull parts of the seagrass out because it is quite a fragile habitat, but also it is quite robust too. But it's better a diver to reduce the impact you have when you're under there, but really enjoy the habitat because it is breathtaking. And for the UK diving, it takes you to a different country almost because it can be amazing conditions in there. So, so as part of the expedition wet where we explored the seagrass, snorkeling rather than free, um, diving, which is always both options are really good, but in this type of bay, Pothy Clyde itself, it's really nice to actually snorkel it too. Less gear, but also very shallow. Unfortunately, we didn't have the best conditions here this time um, because of the wind was in the wrong direction. So it's quite muddy, but it's always recommended if you ever get an opportunity to dive a seagrass or snorkel a seagrass to go there because it is incredible to dive and it really is exciting and it's important to see how important this habitat really is.
We've just finished day four in Wales on Expedition Wet in Porth Dinlian. Enjoyed a nice local IPA, although it's probably going to be the, the only one. But, uh, we've had a bit of an overcast, windy day. We've been into the the bay. Um, Jake's taken us round to see uh, Project Seagrass. The tide was out, um, so we, we could walk out quite far, uh, probably about knee deep. So it's uh, it's great for farmers to get out there and get you know take the kids out there and see what's what's living in the seagrass. There's plenty of evidence of life down there with uh, cat sharks. There's been a few carcasses washed up with some jo a jawbone there, which I'm going to take to my kids' school so they can all see bits of uh, the marine life that's around here. There's some thornback ray egg cases, spotted cat shark egg case. Uh, so there's definitely evidence of plenty of life in there. Just a shame the. Uh, the water wasn't as clear as we'd have liked it to have been. But we've got some footage which we're going to go back now to the campsite and review and get uh, our gear ready for tomorrow's diving. See you then.
So today we dived at Porthos Garden in uh, North Wales on the Llyn Peninsula and uh, we did two dives. We did an 8am dive to recon the area. Um, so we went and got the lay of the land. We did it at high tide as well to make sure we had enough water. Uh, and we also went to find out what animals were living in the area as well. We were led by Jake. So he took us around, showed us the, the area. And then we went back eight o'clock at night as it was going dark to go and do a night dive. Obviously night dives, very different from a day dive so we knew that there'd be a lot more life that would come out that wouldn't come out in the day so in the day we saw leopard goby down at the end of the bay we saw uh, lobsters we saw 15 spine stickleback and we saw some of the same animals plus more but their behavior was completely different so they weren't skittish they weren't running away from us everything was out in the open such as the lobsters came right up to our lights 15 spine stickleback swam into our dome port cameras uh, we had cat sharks and one of the divers uh, saw a European eel as well, which is really exciting due to their conservation status as well. Um, being able to see the massive change, not only in animal life and also in their behaviour as well is incredible. And to show that some of these animals are quite confident around divers as well is also really good. So me and myself and another diver had uh, a little yellow goby that in the daytime would never even accept us coming close whereas at night time we were with it for five minutes and it accepted our presence it allowed us to take photographs and it's amazing to see that difference between the two and it's amazing to also see the the life that lives around the UK can be as tropical and as colourful and as beautiful as those that would live overseas in tropical countries as well. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh.